far too long. Good. I, I Good. love doing these conversations. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Well, it's great to see you both again for another one of these episodes. Um, and today, today we're going to talk about St. George's, which is a theme that is very near and dear to my heart um, as I live in the little town of St. George's on the eastern side of the island. Right. And um, obviously St. George's with its uh, old world charm and as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is um is currently and has been a place for artists um both local and from abroad to flock there and um and paint because it's just such a lovely location so we thought today we would highlight some of those artists and some of the special paintings that focus on saint george's and um really get to know the town a little bit more through the artists i think that that sounds like a, a good place to start good i do think that what we should probably do is give it some a historical uh, overview, if you want to really make it episodic, um, because St. George's was the, was the town where, where Bermuda was first settled. Uh, it is in that area that uh, Sir George Summers came rushing ashore by Fort St. Catherine. Um, and it is at Fort St. Catherine that um, we defended ourselves for a number of years. Uh, and the little village in the bay was, uh, you know, seemed very safe uh, in its own little uh, harbor. So, uh, you know, it, it has, uh, you know, overtones of, uh, you can sort of almost see, I mean, as, as uh, we, the, the town was referred to as the perfect Elizabethan village, um, uh, or the perfect Elizabethan town. I mean, it has the oldest uh, uh, Anglican church in the Western hemisphere. Uh, you know, the, the little winding streets um, are, are, very, are very definitely sort of settled almost like a footpath the way they, they twist and, you know, there's no sort of grid the way there is in Hamilton. Uh, so it's, the, the settlement to it is completely different. Uh, and the houses that there are dotted uh, around there also show that sense of just, you know, I'll, I'll lay down uh, some concrete block or some stone right here and I'll start building a house and someone else would build one, you know, so it's kitty corner to it and so on and so on. So it's great, it's ter terrific. I think one of the most important things of course is that uh, St. George's allows us some historical uh, uh, referencing. In other words, I think of some of the, uh, the, the writers who come to Bermuda who have said that Bermuda didn't color its walls with organic lime and pigment until the turn of the last century. Well, we threw a painting by Thomas Driver painted in 1821. We know that that is historically incorrect because the Thomas Driver work reveals pastel colored homes um, in Bermuda circa 1821. So we can reset the dial about some basic uh, truths or mistruths or misunderstanding uh, about uh, the island and its, uh, and its settlement. Mm -hmm. And I know that with the 12 apostles, which we've talked about in one of our earlier episodes, the first 12 paintings to be a part of our collection here at Masterworks, um, some of those were focused on St. George's. So I didn't know if you wanted to highlight any of those paintings because they are so, um, so, you know, foundational to the museum. Well, the painting, the 12 apostle paintings I can think of at St. George's are the three alts, which is um, the monotype, which was the precursor to the beautiful Bermuda Park that we have, and two other alts, and an Emma Fordyce McRae. I can't think of any of the other eight apostles as um, St. George's material, but certainly George Alt found. The, the, the Pleiser, the Pleiser, you kidding? Oh, the Pleiser, Shinbone Alley, sure, yeah. sure, forgot, forgot that. Um, so, so there are four out of the 12 paintings, which are St. George's um, um, subject matter. And I think the interesting thing about St. George's as an artistic muse is that it lends itself so well to so many different kinds of artists. I mean, obviously the, geome the, the geometric shapes of the houses and the way they, they kind of butt on each other um, was, was really fascinating to a, lot of, to a lot of artists. I mean, you look at you know, some of the Pleisner paintings, you look at people like Niles Spencer, who was a modernist, you look at even the Albert Glez portrait of Juliet who's sitting in a window, um, they, they all took their inspiration from the architecture of St. George's and, um, and that became the touch, touchstone for their artwork. But I think also there were so many people that were attracted, so many artists that were attracted to the St. George's Hotel. I think of the fact that Marsden Hartley and Charles Demuth mm -hmm. Um, after they left the Brunswick Street Hotel in, in, 
and or, or Hartley did anyway in Hamilton, they they migrated to St. George's and found a lot of inspiration there. Um, we, we understand there's a the, the, the British garrisons were, were pretty heavy in St. George's then, and um, some of the figures they painted were British. So it, it, the, the, the town had so many different little little components that attracted so many different artists. Feisner enjoyed the you know the the, the royal palms and. Um, actually, Alt did a beautiful little, which is one of the Twelve Apostles, and a beautiful little um, landscape of St. George's Harbor, which fascinates all artists, I think, even today. In the case of Pleisner, I mean, he, it wasn't just the Royal Palms, I mean, he was, he was struck blind by the, the, the texture and the colors of the island, along with the, the architecture. And so uh, I think that when we did the, uh, the Pleisner uh, show back in 1988, and because the town is so perfectly preserved, we were able to do a, a show around the painting and the photograph. And so we went around to the town, the various locations, and to this day, we do have an offer to visitors as a freebie, a walking tour uh, based on where uh, Pleisner uh, put down his easel and started to, to paint. I mean, and because the town, uh, again, because of the narrow alleys, you can put your, your, your easel down there and continue that uh, practice some 60, 70 years uh, uh, later. You better uh, you might, might be mowed over by a bike, but <laughs> other than that, you're perfectly safe. I mean, you know, you can't get a cement mixer down there because the roads are too narrow. Mm -hmm. So you're a lot safer uh, in there than virtually anywhere else uh, on the island. And let's not forget the great uh, Jack Bush who painted down there uh, and honeymooned in the St. George's Hotel uh, in uh, 1934. So you know, the list uh, you know goes on and on and on. I think that one third of our of our entire collection would probably be. Um, St. George's uh, uh, bound, and it's it's interesting, isn't it, that the ratio of the um, of the of the apostles of the twelve paintings, four of them were St. George's. So that ratio is is about right. You know, it's. it's well, I think I think our collection today would would would, would reflect the same thing. That's what I'm saying, but, yeah. but even today, even even in modern times, you have photographers like Cole Weston, who obviously sailed in St. George's Harbor and did the the magnificent uh, photograph that we have. Um, and sadly, we had a wonderful artist in residence program in St. George's. And, you know, if I had a dime for every single artist that went through that program and said how inspired they were by St. George's. And I think it also reflects on the people of St. George's because you, you, get a, you get a real sense of community in a lot of the paintings as well as when you walk through the town. So, you know, we were, we were lucky with the artist in residence program when we had it there. And, and sadly, we don't have it there anymore. I'd love to reinstated, but um, Reese, Reese, people, you, have, the warmth you have a job because St. Georgian, you have a job, you have an obligation. Of Bring course. Back and, and make it down to St. George. Yeah, I agree. You, the people can get uh, in, 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 inducted immediately in the, in the, uh, in, by the townspeople. And that's yeah. what yeah. happened is that St. Georgians loved the idea, you know, not, not just artists, but the residents, uh, you know, were, were very uh, encouraging and, and welcoming. And so, uh, you know, St. George's probably has an anniversary. Uh, we can make an anniversary up, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and and also the, the, the inspiration of St. George's. I mean, it, you know, you, you send artists down there and they have a, a preconceived notion in their mind. And the minute they get into St. George's, everything changes and they go in a completely different direction, which is really interesting. And some of them pick up on the architecture. Some of them pick up on the boats. Some of them pick up on the on the people. I mean, we the best example I can think of is the artist George Slonson, who, along with Viola Powell, ran this, the, um, the art colony of St. George's in the 30s, mid 30s, at the snow drop in on Duke of York Street. And um, his work of St. George's is, is astounding because it, it covers all bases. It covers Portuguese Bermudians, it covers Black Bermudians, it covers White Bermudians, it covers you know, a lot of the day to day activities like going to town and going to. And so, you know. The, here was an artist who came down here with a very scientific project, the BB project, and became entranced by St. George's. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you know, as Tom often says, we have, you know, one of our Swanson paintings of the tuba plant is one of the few colored, colored meaning with, with color, with, with, with mm -hmm. uh, the spectrum mm -hmm. um, painting of Bermudians in, the, in that, those days. Mm -hmm. And it was really vibrant. I mean, you know, people got dressed up. I mean, you know, they just, they put on their fancy clothes. I mean, it's like the Nora Collier of St. Uh, St. Peter's Church. And here was a Bermudian woman in front of her church with her Sunday scarf on. And it just kind of reflects the way that the St. Georgians are 
were then and are to this day. Not the least of which, of course, are the famous uh, Bermuda Tucker sisters who also couldn't leave St. George's alone. And actually, in some way, uh, uh, painted a, uh, you know, a, a way of life down there. Chickens crossing the road, people carrying laundry, uh, you know, goods, all these sorts of things that uh, one would have been able to quickly whip into their, their style of doing uh, watercolors. So you know, the, the, the tribute to the town is kind of uh, without end. And I, I suppose, uh, you know, aesthetically, the, the most important artist that we have got uh, in, in that respect is both Andrew Wyeth, who did the Royal Palms, and uh, Charles Damoth, who was dumbstruck again by the, uh, the architecture. And it was while he was here in Bermuda that uh, uh, Damoth in particular sort of got revitalized by, uh, by Bermuda's uh, um, forms. Uh, and and uh, you know, it just, uh, it's one of those things that uh, you know, you're happy that uh, when you set out on these, this idea, I've got this idea, I'm gonna call it uh, Masterworks, that we were able to bring some masterpieces into the collection very early on and reflect, uh, you know, what uh, the town and the muse, uh, in this case, did for for the artists. And so, uh, you know, I, I just keep, keep sort of processing all these uh, wonderful things that have happened. That when we stuck the shovel in the ground some 34 years ago, we had no idea what was uh, going to be unearthed. We just did not know what uh, lay below that uh, that surface. So, um, you know, we can put the story of, of St. George's, uh, you know, to bed. Uh, in the way that it is uh, is comprehensive, and if I guess if I were a St. Georgian, I would almost uh, ask uh, of Masterworks to do a St. George's uh, show and bring the residents uh, around to show what the town can do and be look like. Because I went down there the other day, and sadly, 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 it's looking very shabby. The stores are empty. The pl the windows are are dirty and dusty. There's bars across the you know the towns. Uh, you know, the storefronts and stuff like that. You think, wow, this is not too welcoming. This just doesn't look like, uh, you know, a place that an artist would uh, receive some inspiration. So somehow something has got to be done and whether it can happen through uh, our medium, uh, you know, I don't know, but I certainly would like to be part of it, uh, you know, to uh, some form of revitalization. Because although I visit it uh, not as frequently as I should, every time I go down there, I get, wow, this place is special. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be, uh, you know, brought back to life. Yeah, really I agree. And I think the other thing I'd add, too, is, is I agree, you know, living there, I, I, I do see the potential and I, I love that about the town. Um, and I think that with the development plans that are happening there within the next year, um, I think St. George's has a real opportunity to be brought back to life. So I'm, uh, but I'm with you, Tom, like if, if there's some sort of way that we can come together and, and figure out how to make St. George's that artistic creative hub, um, I think the community would back that big time. Well, one of the things that has to happen for that to happen is in my mind is to make sense of the, uh, of the ownership, who owns the buildings uh, and why some of the landlords are not being more responsive to uh, people who have the need and the capacity to do something creative. And it would be better to get a lower rent for something and some activity than no rent whatsoever. whatsoever. Because as we all know, one of the things that uh, is, is, in, is, is harsh in Bermuda is our climate. And the moment you leave a building is the moment uh, it starts to deteriorate. And that deterioration takes place very rapidly once it starts to settle in. Once you get the mildew on the inside, then everything, all the cockroaches and all the other creatures start to follow and the crumble came. You know, the other day I went down, for example, and I went to an abandoned building and you should have seen the plants that were on the inside of the building. The building had only been ab abandoned a couple of years ago. Those right. roots were on the inside because it's nice and damp in those old Bermuda stone walls and those roots are thirsty. And so they were, they were doing their number. And so, uh, you know, all you gotta do is look up and see a, a plant or two on the roof and it, it, it won't take long. I, Anyway, I, I, I wax, uh, you know, uh, way off the, the, the topic. I love taking my camera down to St. George's. I am so inspired when I, got, when I get down there uh, that in, in fact, when I step away uh, uh, from uh, Masterworks in two months time, one of my first uh, uh, things is going to comprehensively uh, record it. And I mean, every nook and cranny and detail, uh, aside from the, the, the projects that I'm working on, I'm doing, uh, images are sort of of the more mundane so that we have some sense of, of architecture. 
Because well, you know, this is just proof, proof positive to me that you as a Bermudian can still find that kind of inspiration from St. George's. And if you still get excited about it, it's just, it, it just boggles my mind how excited people who have never been to Bermuda before must feel between, you know, going over, you know, coming off the causeway, going past Castle Harbor, going into St. George's, you know, seeing the, smelling the air and then seeing this town that's this little jewel sitting in the middle there. I mean, can you imagine we they become, not that we've become, you know, immune to it, but, you know, you, we know about it. Can you imagine how it must feel to somebody who's never been here before? I mean, it is magical and inspirational. Yeah. Right. And I will say my favorite, I, I do think the little cobblestone streets and the architecture, are, it's beautiful. But my favorite vista is when you're in the harbor on a boat and you're looking at the town. Right. There's something really special and quaint about it. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a very neat place to explore, both as an artist and even just as somebody that appreciates, you know, history and heritage. So mm -hmm. um, not, not to give it one individual or another a, a plug or not a plug, but I look at what Miss um, um, Braxton has done with the per perfumery, Isabel Braxton. Right. I walked in there the other day, that building has been beautifully brought back to life and there's a little industry going on there and there could be more of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. well, remember what Stuart Hall was like 30 years ago? I sure do, that place was falling down. That's right. Yep. And now it's just, and now it's just a gem yeah. to life, yeah. yeah. Does she still do the teas there, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Wednesdays and Saturdays. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll have, okay, time, well, Tom, for, I'll have Tom, time for that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'll you'll be doing all the things. <laughs> all right. Well, Tom Elise, thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you all. And until next time. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.